Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akirishin. We are here on the World of Warplanes website looking at the Hurricane Marathon page. This is an event that runs from September 1st through September 14th. You do a series of missions, uh, which you can uh, check out for yourself. But in the end, if you complete all of the missions, you get the Hurricane MK. 1A British fighter, which is a tier 4 Hawker Hurricane MK 1A. So the question is, is this an aircraft that you want? What is this aircraft like? How is it to fly it? And I hope to answer some of those questions in this video. So let's take a look at the Hurricane MK 1A, which I have at specialist level. Okay, so we are now looking at the Hawker Hurricane MK-1A, Tier 4 British fighter, a premium aircraft, and its characteristics are it uh, has machine gun armaments, effective in close combat, well, as with most fighters, low survivability and often catches fire. It is stated to have good airspeed and boost, we'll see about that, uh, good maneuverability in horizontal turns, so not high or very high maneuverability, just good, and it is said to be effective in low altitude maneuvering combat. The Hurricane MK-1A is equipped with eight 303 Browning machine guns, which do 25 damage per second each, a rate of fire of 600 rounds per minute, and an effective firing range of only 440 meters, which is pretty abysmal, I would say. Let's see, by comparison, the Fantome British fighter has 20 millimeter cannons and two 303 Brownings. The 20 millimeter cannons have a 580 meter effective firing range. And of course the same for the machine guns, but hey, you know, it outguns the uh, Hurricane 1A and it has very high maneuverability just to give you a little bit of a comparison there. Now I do have this aircraft at specialist level and for the cockpit we have a choice between cockpit armor which increases the crew's resistance to injuries but at the cost of aircraft maneuverability or you can go with the sight which increases firing accuracy but at the cost of the pilot's resistance to injuries. Well, this aircraft only has uh, good maneuverability in horizontal turns, so we certainly don't want it to be less maneuverable. So I did not go with the cockpit armor. Instead, I went with the sight. And uh, I happen to have the advanced optical sight on this, which has plus 12 accuracy of forward firing offensive armament, 10% chance of inflicting critical damage, 10% chance of causing a fire at the cost of 11% uh, decrease in the pilot's resistance to injuries. Now because we do have that increased chance of our pilot getting injured, I did equip as one of my consumables emergency medical kit, which heals an injured crew member, including our pilot of course, and provides resistance to injury for 10 seconds. So that's kind of one of my ways of dealing with that, um, you know, deficiency. For the airframe, we have a choice between reinforced skin, which increases the resistance of wings and tails to critical damage at the cost of aircraft speed. You know, I really don't find this aircraft to be all that fast, so I didn't want to lose any speed. You've got lightweight wing frame, which increases aircraft maneuverability, but at the cost of aircraft hit points. And finally, polished skin, which increases aircraft speed, but at the cost of aircraft maneuverability. Again, don't want to do anything to reduce this aircraft's maneuverability, so I did go with the lightweight wing frame. Uh, you know, the more maneuverable this aircraft is, the better it is defensively. Therefore, I think that kind of offsets the loss in hit points. Uh, the stock, it's a stock 
lightweight wing frame which increases 5%, our roll maneuverability 1% maneuverability in turns. We have a 1% reduction in hit points with that though and minus 3% wings resistance to critical damage. Again using uh, consumable to try to ameliorate that deficiency I went with secondary control system which restores controllability of wings and tail. For the engine we have a choice between engine armor protection which increases the engine's resistance to damage but at the cost of aircraft speed again I don't find this aircraft to be all that fast so I didn't want to lose speed. Lightweight power unit which increases aircraft maneuverability but at the cost of the engine's resistance to damage and finally uprated engine which increases engine thrust but decreases the aircraft's resistance to fire. I think either lightweight power unit or uprated engine would both be good for this aircraft but I think the lightweight power unit is better uh, because we do want to increase this aircraft's maneuverability given it only has good maneuverability not high maneuverability or very high maneuverability. And for that we've got the stock lightweight power unit which has a 2% increase in yaw maneuverability that that really doesn't mean anything to me I don't really do a lot of yawing <laughs> uh, but it ha does have the 1% increase in maneuverability in turns at the cost of 3% engine decrease in the engine's resistance to critical damage. Now to try to ameliorate that issue again with the consumable I went with emergency engine restart system. So if our engine does get knocked out we can hopefully get it back in working order. So I've kind of you know gone with the increases in maneuverability with these pieces of equipment and tried to ameliorate any negatives with our consumables. For ammunition I went with the universal ammunition which increases the chance of causing fire and inflicting critical damage probably about even usually that's the case for machine guns or maybe a little bit more on the side of causing fire because you do have the high rate of fire so that's best for those machine gun armaments. In terms of the aircraft's specifications, get this all expanded for you here. This is certainly a low altitude fighter. Its maximum optimum altitude is 900 meters. Again, pretty abysmal. Uh, service ceiling is 2,900 meters. Average time to turn 360 degrees is 10 seconds, so certainly not the worst, but not the best either. Rate of roll is 109 degrees per second. Maximum optimal speed is 384 kilometers per hour. So again, see, I, I really don't find this aircraft to be <laughs> particularly fast. Stall speed is 120 kilometers per hour not very good boost duration is only eight seconds so you know in the description where it says good airspeed and boost I really don't find that to be all that accurate 300 something kilometers per hour with a boost of only eight seconds not that impressive in terms of pilot skills went with Engine Guru 1, which increases engine thrust by 3%. That increases our aircraft's acceleration when we need to get going. To help our maneuverability upgrades, I went with Aerodynamics Expert, which increases the positive effect of the mounted equipment on aircraft maneuverability and speed by 40%. Likewise, Aerobatics Expert increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%, providing a significant advantage in close maneuvering combat. To try to deal with the fact that this aircraft tends to catch fire more often than others I did go with fire resistance which reduces fire duration and damage by 20 percent had one skill point left over so I went with eagle-eyed which allows us to see enemy aircraft uh, 10 percent sooner basically it's a sharp looking aircraft good colors in terms of paint schemes, this is summer, winter, 
Very sharp there. I like that a lot. Desert. I like this little tight camo right here. And finally, Marine. Again, I really like the, the look of the aircraft. It's, it's a sharp looking aircraft, good paint schemes. I wish some of, some of the uh, Spitfires had these really neat paint schemes. All right, so let's head into a battle now and see how the MK-1A performs. All right, so we will be flying the Hurricane MK-1A over the peripheral mission, Snowy Shore. Let's roll. And finish theater of operation. And we're going to head right for the air base. Cover your allies. Hit the enemy. And we shall win. It took us a second to load in there. So I think what's probably best with this aircraft is to kind of get in one spot and stick there since it's not really fast. All right, shot down by BF-109, but we have the airfield, so we'll fly right back in there. Maybe we'll even find that BF-109. That's him. Got him. A little revenge there, always nice. And we're just trying to get out of this. Guys, guns, but didn't quite happen. Although it looks like he got shot down too. But hey, we'll just fly right back in. Something shoot on us there for a second. What is that? Let's see if we can fly with inside this thing. There we go. A little rolling there, but ugh, this other plane is going to get us. Jeez. These guys are kind of crowded here. So as you can see, maneuverability can be a little bit of an issue. We get out turned. Oh, I love the paint scheme on that uh, BF-109. Sharp looking, very sharp looking. All right, let's see what we have going on here. Boy. Yeah, 
It is very crowded with reds up here. You know, this guy shot us down earlier, I believe. And I'm guessing he has high maneuverability, so we better take him out quickly. Yeah, see, we got the Avenger accolade there. A little late, but we did get it. Team is doing well. Take us a little time to get back up here. Come on, cluck. Tick away. You see, when you get those machine guns and you're in close range, they really chew into other aircraft. But maneuverability is one of the weaknesses of this aircraft. There's a lot of other fighters out there that are going to outmaneuver you. Where is everybody? What do we have there? P-40. I mean, look how fast it does chew through uh, enemy aircraft. We seem to have. Where is everybody? I'm proud of you, pilot. Head back home. Okay, so that's it, folks. Victory. Number one spot on the team. One Chevron on the grade rank. Uh, subjugator and effective fire. Head back to the. Hanger and take a look at the after action report now. All right, so looking at our battle results here, a little over 85,000 in currency, 4,500 in experience points, 225 in free experience. Shot down seven aircraft, three assists, and we pretty much stayed over that one capture point, the uh, airfield there. And this number here, the four times we were shot down, reflects the fact that uh, we were just in the middle of a sea of red defending that airfield. Uh, it was definitely where all of the action was. And, you know, it seemed like we were outnumbered 10 to 1 there. We did get the Avenger accolade twice, so two of those aircraft that shot us down, we shot down subsequently. So that's always good to, uh, to do. 7600 in combat points got us the number one spot on the team and there you have it folks I mean certainly it is a good aircraft to get um, I mean you know you're not having to spend any coin for it really but in terms of it being you know a spectacular aircraft eh not so much but it's definitely worth having and I hope that you really enjoyed this video and if you get an opportunity to fly the Hurricane MK1A especially at the specialist level I hope you have tremendous success with it